Memory, How to Develop, Train, and Use It, Large Print. Book by William Walker Atkinson. Narrated by Andrew. Originally published in 1909. This is a great audiobook production, created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 3. Celebrated Cases of Memory. In order that the student may appreciate the marvelous extent of development possible to the memory, we have thought it advisable to mention a number of celebrated cases, past and present. In so doing we have no desire to hold up these cases as worthy of imitation, for they are exceptional and not necessary in everyday life. We mention them merely to show to what wonderful extent development along these lines is possible. In India, in the past, the sacred books were committed to memory and handed down from teacher to student for ages. And even today, it is no uncommon thing for the student to be able to repeat, word for word, some voluminous religious work equal in extent to the New Testament. Max Muller states that the entire text and glossary of Panini's Sanskrit grammar, equal in extent to the entire Bible, were handed down orally for several centuries before being committed to writing. There are Brahmins today who have committed to memory, and who can repeat at will, the entire collection of religious poems known as the Mahabharata, consisting of over 300,000 slokas or verses. Leland states that, the Slavonian minstrels of the present day have by heart with remarkable accuracy immensely long epic poems. I have found the same among Algonquin Indians whose sagas or mythic legends are interminable, and yet are committed word by word accurately. I have heard in England of a lady ninety years of age whose memory was miraculous, and of which extraordinary instances are narrated by her friends. She attributed it to the fact that when young she had been made to learn a verse from the Bible every day, and then constantly review it. As her memory improved, she learned more, the result being that in the end she could repeat from memory any verse or chapter called for in the whole scripture. It is related that Mithridates, the ancient warrior king, knew the name of every soldier in his great army and conversed fluently in 22 dialects. Pliny relates that Carmides could repeat the contents of every book in his large library. Hortensius, the Roman orator, had a remarkable memory which enabled him to retain and recollect the exact words of his opponent's argument without making a single notation. On a wager, he attended a great auction sale which lasted over an entire day and then called off in their proper order every object sold, the name of its purchaser, and the price thereof. Seneca is said to have acquired the ability to memorize several thousand proper names and to repeat them in the order in which they had been given him and also to reverse the order and call off the list backward. He also accomplished the feat of listening to several hundred persons, each of whom gave him a verse, memorizing the same as they proceeded, and then repeating them word for word in the exact order of their delivery, and then reversing the process with complete success. UCB has stated that only the memory of Esdras saved the Hebrew scriptures to the world, for when the Chaldeans destroyed the manuscripts Esdras was able to repeat them, word by word to the scribes, who then reproduced them. The Mohammedan scholars are able to repeat the entire text of the Quran, letter perfect. Scaliger committed the entire text of the Iliad and the Odyssey in three weeks. Ben Johnson is said to have been able to repeat all of his own works from memory, with the greatest ease. Bulwer could repeat the Odes of Horus from memory. Pascal could repeat the entire Bible, from beginning to end, as well as being able to recall any given paragraph, verse, line, or chapter. Landor is said to have read a book but once, when he would dispose of it, having impressed it upon his memory, to be recalled years after, if necessary. Byron could recite all of his own poems. Buffon could repeat his works from beginning to end. Bryant possessed the same ability to repeat his own works. Bishop Saunderson could repeat the greater part of Juvenal and Perseus, all of Tully, and all of Horace. Fedosova, a Russian peasant, could repeat over 25,000 poems, folk songs, legends, fairy tales, war stories, etc., when she was over 70 years of age. The celebrated Blind Alec, an aged Scottish beggar, could repeat any verse in the Bible called for, as well as the entire text of all the chapters and books. The newspapers, a few years ago, contained the accounts of a man named Clark who lived in New York City. He is said to have been able to give the exact presidential vote in each state of the Union since the first election. He could give the population in every town of any size in the world either present or in the past providing there was a record of the same. 
He could quote from Shakespeare for hours at a time beginning at any given point in any play. He could recite the entire text of the Iliad in the original Greek. The historical case of the unnamed Dutchman is known to all students of memory. This man is said to have been able to take up a fresh newspaper, to read it all through, including the advertisements, and then to repeat its contents, word for word, from beginning to end. On one occasion, he is said to have heaped wonder upon wonder by repeating the contents of the paper backward, beginning with the last word and ending with the first. Lyon, the English actor, is said to have duplicated this feat, using a large London paper and including the market quotations, reports of the debates in Parliament. The Railroad Timetables and the Advertisements A London waiter is said to have performed a similar feat, on a wager, he memorizing and correctly repeating the contents of an eight-page paper. One of the most remarkable instances of extraordinary memory known to history is that of the child Christian Maynekin. When less than four years of age, he could repeat the entire Bible, 200 hymns, 5,000 Latin words, and much ecclesiastical history, theory, dogmas, arguments and an encyclopedic quantity of theological literature. He is said to have practically retained every word that was read to him. His case was abnormal and he died at an early age. John Stuart Mill is said to have acquired a fair knowledge of Greek at the age of three years and to have memorized Hume, Gibbon, and other historians at the age of eight. Shortly after he mastered and memorized Herodotus, Xenophon, some of Socrates, and six of Plato's dialogues. Richard Porson is said to have memorized the entire text of Homer, Horace, Cicero, Virgil, Livy, Shakespeare, Milton, and Gibbon. He is said to have been able to memorize any ordinary novel at one careful reading, and to have several times performed the feat of memorizing the entire contents of some English monthly review. De Rossi was able to perform the feat of repeating a hundred lines from any of the four great Italian poets. Provided he was given a line at random from their works, his hundred lines following immediately after the given line. Of course, this feat required the memorizing of the entire works of those poets and the ability to take up the repetition from any given point, the latter feature being as remarkable as the former. There have been cases of printers being able to repeat, word for word, books of which they had set the type. Professor Lawson was able to teach his classes on the scriptures without referring to the book. He claimed that if the entire stock of Bibles were to be destroyed, he could restore the book entire from his memory. Rev. Thomas Fuller is said to have been able to walk down a long London street, reading the names of the signs on both sides, then recalling them in the order in which they had been seen, and then by reversing the order. There are many cases on record of persons who memorized the words of every known tongue of civilization, as well as a great number of dialects languages, and tongues of savage races. Bosuet had memorized the entire Bible and Homer, Horace, and Virgil beside. Niebuhr, the historian, was once employed in a government office, the records of which were destroyed. He thereupon restored the entire contents of the book of records which he had written, all from his memory. Asa Gray knew the names of 10,000 plants. Milton had a vocabulary of 20,000 words, and Shakespeare one of 25,000. Cuvier and Agassiz are said to have memorized lists of several thousand species and varieties of animals. Maglia Becchi, the librarian of Florence, is said to have known the location of every volume in the large library of which he was in charge, and the complete list of works along certain lines in all the other great libraries. He once claimed that he was able to repeat titles of over a half million of books in many languages and upon many subjects. In nearly every walk of life are to be found persons with memories wonderfully developed along the lines of their particular occupation. Librarians possess this faculty to an unusual degree. Skilled workers in the finer lines of manufacture also manifest a wonderful memory for the tiny parts of the manufactured article, etc. Bank officers have a wonderful memory for names and faces. Some lawyers are able to recall cases quoted in the authorities years after they have read them. Perhaps the most common, and yet the most remarkable, instances of memorizing in one's daily work is to be found in the cases of the theatrical profession. In some cases, members of stock companies must not only be able to repeat the lines of the play they are engaged in acting at the time, but also the one that they are rehearsing for the following week, and possibly the one for the second week. 
And in repertoire companies, the actors are required to be letter-perfect in a dozen or more plays, surely a wonderful feat, and yet one so common that no notice is given to it. In some of the celebrated cases, the degree of recollection manifested is undoubtedly abnormal. But in the majority of the cases, it may be seen that the result has been obtained only by the use of natural methods and persistent exercise. That wonderful memories may be acquired by anyone who will devote to the task patience, time, and work is a fact generally acknowledged by all students of the subject. It is not a gift, but something to be won by effort and work along scientific lines. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.